Oh, sneak on the hot sauce. Go out there, support the bra. Ik moet nog wel bezig gaan, want die goed is lekker. Het is lekker smoke taste, maar fuck. The Babbling Heads Podcast. Yo, yo, welcome to this week's uh, episode of the Babbling Heads Podcast. This is the base one in seven. Hi, I'm DJ Fingers. Joe's on. Charlie XTC. Check yeah. out, before mm. we do anything, I just want to plug the uh, bra, Tofik's um, CBD water. Tofik back. Is yeah, he's uh, sponsored by them. And um, dudes, you don't want to try it. It relaxes you. How you break it for after um, training? Yeah, yeah. Just that is inflammation. It takes mm-hmm. that away. Dude, I feel nowadays I'm feeling to relax me, bro. I'm, and, and I'm yeah. not getting paid to say this, no. No, no, no. But, but they, we are looking for a sponsor, though. So I actually that. want to get this bra on because apparently uh, Tovik told me he's got a liquor story behind mm. this, this product and and his life type of thing. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so also, the, for those that don't know, um, Tovik Bakis was one of the highest ranked B-boys in South Africa, representing South Africa as one of the Red Bull BC One winners. As also like at a couple of international battles at Battle of the Year as well as Battle VNR, so yeah, the guy's been doing. Amazing I didn't stuff. know that. Also, a prodigy of the Yieldwood Project classes out in East Ridge Mitchell's Plain under the tutelage of Angelo DJ V Angelo Van Wyk. So yeah, Prat one, one, one of the one of the. Prat the Prat Prat the oh, I think I just want to congratulate myself for becoming a new member of. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. of uh, Yieldwood. Pat myself on the back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have to do it. Nobody else is gonna do it. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. And like in the, in that spirit of talking about Yildewood, we have another associate um, NPO that's now been established last year in Parkwood, and we'd like to welcome this week's guest. Thanks. Brad, that's a question. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, morning brother. Yeah, I mean, um, we spoke last year already, and and finally we get into to to um, to do it. I, I, how I met him, he, he serviced my Mac. He's a Mac genius, dude. Mm. Okay. He's a Mac genius. So, yeah, so, uh, tell us just a brief uh, history of yourself and how you came to, 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 to uh, do this. To do all to, of this. Just your mic. Uh, so, um, so six, <coughs> no, yes, it's fast. Thank you. It's, it's, it's not rocket <laughs> science. Um, I've been. No, no closer, 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 closer. Don't I've be scared, don't be scared. <laughs> I've been um, living life uh, basically under the radar. Um, I've been known as as an observer um, and someone closer, and someone that actually um, you can move it, man. Move inspires, inspires uh, like the youth. Um, and for the longest time, I've been looking at all of the social ills, and with me bringing up kids as well, knowing what I want for them, um, it became fundamental for me to start thinking in the way of change, just to not only safeguard my kids, but friends of mm. friends and their friends, you know? Um, and it's quite ironic that, that um, my idea was actually amplified by a loss of life of, of mm. our youth. Um, I mean, my, my two boys, 11, no, 10 and 15, um, not even a year ago, they were crying every night, uh, you know? Yeah crying themselves to sleep because they lost an 11 year old friend of theirs due, yes. due to gang war. Sure. And for that two weeks, it, it just took me some to, to some other place that unlocked like thoughts that, that I've always been thinking of, but I was yeah. always not willing to, 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 to mention these things. And um, then one night we were sitting in my uh, garage and I had three youth members over and they were like, Brad, you know what you're doing so much for only us, you know, and these other parties in Parkwood that that you can actually join up with to to you know make the force um, stronger. Yeah, and that's when um, I gave my keys to Keegan, and he went to go and get, uh, which is now my co-founder, um, Abdurrahim, and mm. you know we've been doing things separately, like feeding here, feeding there, you know, um, supporting kids that has issues that don't have a mother or father figure to go to. Yeah. So. We just combined our resources and we came up with Rise Up and here we are. I mean, we've got a following of nearly 2,000 people mm. and it's growing by the day because people are starting to see the change that, that kids are showing them. And that's what we want to do. We want kids to inspire the elders um, to become better so that they can start doing what we're doing for their kids. Oh, we're dope. That's commendable. <clears throat> um, having said that, like you said, like you... You were working in isolation, and I think it happens a lot, especially amongst MPOs, is where people tend to work in silos, and there's always the fear of uh, um, people stealing your funding or your source of income, etc. Like it, and I mean, just having an off-air conversation is like where I recommended a funder to you now early on. 
So like, um, have you approached other organizations within Parkwood? Because I remember even um, Monisha, whose um, who's video we're gonna um, promote later on in the episode, she also had an initiative in Parkwood called, um, I think it was a Rise Up, not a Rise Up, sorry, um, Rebel Art Project. Um, okay. I'm not sure if it's still operational, <coughs> but obviously that, that's the thing. And also like with them burning down the, the old rates office on the yeah. other side of Parkwood is like, uh, that's also been taken away community spaces where I know like um, even organizations like um, Royal Fam Kings, RFK, um, the Crump movement where they used to have workshops there, those those initiatives are no longer available. And we working in at the as you'll do it in at Plantation, where you, your kids also been part of the program. Um, have you identified other organizations within within Parkwood that you could guys could collaborate with? Well, there's um, there's actually a huge uprising of mm. of people doing a lot of good, which um, we are in all favor of. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the initial thing that we always said. Look, the more heads together, mm. the brighter the 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 more open the road's going to yeah, be. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, we have been. Um, we we always offer to help and to yeah. assist wherever we can. I mean, something as simple as the sporting park, which um, mm. attracts most of the kids. I mean, um, DJ uh, Mad Fingers was there uh, for our first event, initial yeah. event. It was so huge, mm. um, but also we, 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 we just brought our difference to it, you know? Yeah. Broadcasting the entire event, um, showing kids that you're on, on any type of platform, whether it's mm. a tablet, your phone, you can even sit at home and watch the Sunday League games if yeah. need be. So with that twist in, in all of um, what we do, um, we actually, we, we've been approached to, 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 to be like the ambassadors for sports in Parkwood. I yeah. mean, um, it went as far as uh, Oasis, um, mm -hmm. the football yeah, yeah. Um, association. They've actually signed, um, um, well, they, they're basically assisting us yeah, yeah. Um, because they can, they also know that there's no one else in Parkwood that's able to to feed them or to basically bring uh, kids to yeah, yeah. their program, you know? Um, and for the largest part, I mean, it's been a blessing. I mean, we are asking, we are reaching out to others, look, whether we yeah. can help with, even if it's 120 liters of soup and that organization can't uh, meet the demands, I mean, we all yeah. here to do the same thing. So in to answer your question, mm -hmm. we, we are actually looking into actually expanding and working with other NPOs within the area. Yeah, there's, a, there's actually another initiative um, that's being run under <coughs> City of Cape Town's Department of Public <coughs> Transport and Works um, pertaining to, because um, this area has been highlighted as a hotspot, a COVID-19 hotspot. So since last year, I think for the past eight months, I've also been involved in terms of trying to identify like they like basically brought all civil society organizations together with Department of Health, et cetera, and stuff like that, where we have a, a COVID task force and like just trying to disseminate information to the masses and like where it's um, things where your organization might benefit would be like in terms of like supply of masks, um, sanitizers, et cetera, like that. Just like getting information out and pamphlets and posters to the community because a lot of our communities like actually a, s a small case of the, the amount of conspiracy theories that's abounding in the communities like people like nice nah, the disease as the government <laughs> trials, <laughs> but i mean it's, it's people are dying yeah, it's like yeah. uh, we so. know of close people uh, that are suffering from it who have gone through it some who have passed away so um also like just to educate so these, these like just you coming over here we already now establish like various plugs and also like what i always do is like i try and find out like how does your particular skill set maybe apply to us like in terms of you can provide the babbling heads with um, it support but they need to the max or even heal the wood, et cetera. And then how can we then give back to you and to your organization, whether it be services with sound, DJing, performances, things like that. So it's like just over a year alone, it's like I think we've already started to spread the network. Yeah. Um, tell me, you, you, you guys are talking about established like MPOs and working together, like, um, but you recently started an MPO. So mm -hmm. like, my question is like, how difficult is it to get started for somebody that, that has an idea in the head, like you had an idea in your head, right? And then you, you acted on that. And, and there's a lot of other guys out there like with so ideas in the heads, but how do they get the ball rolling? So, um, well, how did you get the ball rolling? So, so this is how we got the ball rolling. I can only advise as of what we, what we went through. So 
firstly, um, the idea is nothing without execution, yeah. right? Yeah. So you need to find the right people. <laughs> you know, you would like to trust everyone, but you need to find people that's actually um, go-getters, you know? You don't need to wait yeah. on them. They can use the initiative. So that's the type of people that we actually um, got on board, um, especially paper pushers, because... <sighs> If you're not good in admin, you're not going to get anywhere. Admin is a killer of all admin organizations. Admin is a killer to start up any organization. And I mean, you get setbacks, you get like, your, your paperwork comes back and forth all the time. And if you're not, if you're not really, if you're not passionate about what you do, you drop the ball because... So get somebody to do that basically for you. Or well, that doesn't well, be ideal. Identify well, somebody. Identify with, someone hmm. within your community okay. because that's the fundamental part of it. It has to be people that, live breathe walk beside you every day because as you can see the t-shirt that i'm wearing it, it says be the change you want to see mm. so my my philosophy is you can you can employ anyone from outside i mean he's going to be a dictator he hasn't been through this you know it's it's you need to get it from yeah from home mm -hmm. you need to it needs to heat home because if i if i take someone like um kiam uh mutang he's he's one of our, our members i mean Everyone knows him, but because he wears this T-shirt, it just brings another perspective of, of the guy, you know? Mm. He's, a, he's a good father, he goes to work every day, but he comes home and he puts in his hours at Rise Up because he knows what the change is for. Mm. I mean, anyone that has a, a, a kid surely would understand why we're doing this. I mean, yeah. our initial idea was because of the gangsterism in, in Parkwood and many mm. other areas, yeah. If we are the guys that, that stand on the corner before he gets to the gang, you know, and, and, and gets initiated and tell him, look, there's something different when we want you to see. What is it that you're actually passionate about? Is it, do you really want to go and kill for someone else? Do you really want to destroy your life by using drugs and stuff like that? Why not focus on, on who you are, who you really mm -hmm. want to be, become a better you, whether it's in football, singing, athletics, you know, everyone is not a soccer player. Yeah. yeah, but someone could be a good analyst. Everyone's not uh, the fastest runner, but he can be the fastest coach. You know what I'm mm. saying? So we basically want to tell kids that if you if you haven't been um, down that road where someone actually looks and finds your passion and you have no one to speak to, I mean, we mm. we more than happy to speak to you because even if we just change one kid, just one. Yeah. He's got so many followers, and that's what I tell my team every day. We all have so many kids and people looking up to us. There's no room for error. I mean, yes, we're all human. Um, yeah. You take a drink here, you take a drink there, but it's how you conduct yourself doing these things. Yeah. I mean, when I was growing up, people were drinking all the time, but oh, yeah. it was never to the extent where bottles get thrown in the road. And, you know, yeah. we, just need yeah. to, we just need to bring back that heart because I think people has lost the art. It's mm. because of social ills, unemployment, whatever the government has done, it's it's all it's all because of that. But mm. we're still individuals. Mm. We can still pick ourselves up. And I mean, if we search deeply within ourselves, we can see job creation. We can see a lot of things. Yeah. But we all need to just stand together and just move forward together. Check in the in, in the info you sent us, you said a a ward counselor a counselor helped you. I think uh, let's 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 um, so say his name and because because was Amon Kla Alters one yeah the government it, but let's let's give them props where where they where they they doing good man so let's just elaborate on that for me please man so um, it was basically a festival of 2020 during the pandemic when um, I identified that look Parkwood is is actually it's a disaster I mean a park where kids should play in is full of gangster signs and mm. you know little short uh, messages and stuff and i started a campaign um called clean up the wood mm. um and to the largest extent we never knew where we we're gonna get the paint from and whatever and as you mentioned um, our local ward councillor mr william Aikum, <clears throat> he basically approached us and said look for the first uh, park he gave us 60 liters of paint and, you know, we were so appreciative because we were going to have, we thought that was the only paint we were going to have, and we mm. stretched it through about two parks. And then 
we need eventually when he saw our work and <clears throat> he was also very skeptical because he thought that look was painted for dag more for the and that's what we heard throughout the process from everyone yeah but through as god we used the very people that said those words we used their kids to assist us in painting that box yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. because we we we're basically teaching them that you took the time to fix this up you enjoying what it looks like you know keep it that way so take you know? pride of, of take pride of of, yeah. of of who you are what you have you know um i always i always say look when i wake up in the morning i look at the mountains and i'm appreciative of the yard or stand up a coastline or whatever but you know what we have things that we could be grateful of yeah. Yeah. and i'm trying to install this into every kid i mean they they just as excited as us i mean they can't wait for this um for this uh premises that we just acquired to to actually be done because they know it's going to be their safe haven. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you walk outside the gates, it's easy to get shot or whatever, you yeah. know, because of the social ills, but when they're inside with us, we are able to protect them, you know? And that's why it's fu- it's, it's actually fundamentally important that we do get people to come on board to assist with security, the revamping of the premises mm. because you know what we're doing? we're actually creating a new generation because like my co-founder always says we probably the last generation that can save the future yeah. because everyone else didn't grow up the way we did exactly you know they need to be they need to be taught what it was like because they don't know anything else true tell me um just where is where is um premises that you guys have required so it's it used to be the um Acacia Primary School. Mm. It's off Acacia Road in Parkwood. Um, it's now called the um, Western Cape uh, Western Cape uh, College of Western Cape, something mm. like something like that. Um, and it's led by um, a an individual that's been that actually also saw the need for people to finish mm. a matric. Something as simple as that. Is that at Southern Suburbs Academy? Southern Suburbs Academy. There oh, we go. Okay, okay. The Youth Academy. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's headed by Mr. Simons. Mm. Um, Mr. Simons also, he's very enthusiastic. He he's mentioned that soon it will become the Rise Up uh, Academy. You know, because okay, yeah. he, he he saw that that there's actually um, there's potential in us actually taking over from him. Mm. You know, because we we don't just embark on things. We actually think things through. We we meet about it. We we brainstorm about mm. it because we can't take on anything that we not able to to fulfill yeah and since we've done this i mean we've got ex teachers uh inboxing us saying look in parkwood if there's anything you need from us we'll be there True. you know and that's what we're asking for people like that to just rise up and actually be a part of of this uh journey mm-hmm. i know you you've <coughs> mentioned that um you guys have done feeding schemes previously um and you worked with Oasis. Um, have you guys thought about that with at the new premises of establishing a food garden to just to maintain or secure um, food security and to assist with uh, the feeding scheme itself? Yes, sir. Uh, so um, the past three weeks uh, or four weeks, if I had to put it that way, mm. um, my co-founder and the team of youth um, has been doing they've been doing landscaping they busy mm. um sorting out the ground so that we can start planting mm-hmm. you know and the the cool part about this is i'm in all favor of this because yeah. there's a lot of grannies uncles you know sitting at home mm. with the knowledge yeah. that can actually come into the garden and also just have that quiet time you know yeah. mm. taking them out of their situation for just even just an hour or, or mm. two you know just refocusing the energy on something that actually matters mm-hmm. by doing that you know it stimulates something in your mind yeah. look look at it, it's calm to, to mm-hmm. be able to do this but when you go back home it's chaos yeah so the soil yeah you know so so you find you find that common ground and and what you learn from even working in a garden you can apply in life as well mm-hmm. if if need be they can bring in the the social ills and we can they can work on the garden together mm-hmm. you know because at home you might not have a quiet place but yeah. inside rise up in the yeah. garden or whichever facility we will have in future mm. that's where you can actually have your quiet time and actually spend some time with your family that's mm. that's what we need to do I just wanna actually anybody that's listening to this as they will donate I mean compost or plant or whatever that can help 
if just contact us but I'll rise up obviously on Facebook as well no? yes is I, no? okay um on the interview you said you, you tackle hunger um and you use sports and stuff like that how do you it says was like IT gun how do you how do you how are you gonna use that that uh, skills that skill set to to my skill set uh. so um you know with the to the to a large extent I think that that people that don't know technology are actually fearful thereof. Mm. Um, and the one thing that I always tell my family is that I've taught them everything they know, you know, and it's just navigation. Once we look, I'm hoping that in future we will have this uh, computer literacy room where you can explore what, what kids, you know, know and what they don't mm. and then work on, on things like that because going into the future, I don't think we're going to have paper applications anymore yeah. and everyone mm -hmm. needs to be skilled in that sense. Mm -hmm. So I think that I'll, I'll be definitely be able to make a change with that. I mean, we were sponsored by um, uh, Van Skyke, uh, Van the Skyke, bookstore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we actually just waiting for the premises to be ready, then we're going to open up that library because mm, reading nice. is also a fundamental part of growing up. Yeah. If kids don't read, they won't be able to fill out a form in future, mm. whether it's online or on paper. So we're there to re-educate the youth on how to actually approach things like this. And I'm glad that I'm on board with, with my skill set. Just like just pertaining to your skill set now, we, we have a lot of talk. Um, I think since 2019, the term the fourth industrial revolution has been abounding. And yes, we, w we are entering into an age where kids will be learning coding like as they learn reading, et cetera, yeah. um, because this is a digital age. But I think also like the tech, it, um, I don't know, how to tax it, the like the working with the soil, I think those are also skills that are imperative and is needed because like just you mentioning the, the elder folk um, in the communities, those are the people that know the old men's right. There we go. How to grow the, the buhu, how to use certain herbs and stuff like that. So we're not that dependent on big pharma companies in terms of we have a wealth of knowledge um, as a sense of the, of the koi, et cetera, like in terms of what, what remedies to use to treat certain ailments. And I think that should also be part and parcel of the education that kids get. Yes, we have the coding, we have the, the digital side of things, but at the end of the day, you need to know how to grow your own food. You can be stuck on the screen, but at the end of the day, you have to eat. Absolutely. You, can't, you can't feed yourself on Absolutely. megabytes and downloads, et cetera, or apps. <laughs> <laughs> Content is king, bro. Content is king. <laughs> so so um, just to... to, to elaborate on, mm. on, on the skill sets that, that we will be able to acquire. Um, mm. I mean, like you said, there's, there's elders in the community that can actually teach the kids, you yeah. know? Yeah. And kids today, they think that anything in IT or with a computer is the way forward. Mm. Honestly, to sustain life, you yeah. need a farmer, you need a bricklayer, yeah. you need carpenters, you need, you know? Because not every kid is academically inclined to, mm. to be great. Mm. I mean, um, if it was in lockdown, I read um, a letter from um, a Chinese principal and he stated to the parents, there's no need to be hard on your kids. If they don't do good in maths, maybe they're not mathematicians, mm. but they could be an entertainer. They yeah. could be an artist. So you need to just... Gamer. You know, a <laughs> gamer. I mean, they make money, you yeah. know. The thing is, you need to be able to understand your kid. Mm. Once you understand your kid... So you, you'll take so much pressure off that, that, that little soul, you know, mm. because you can't have him be who you were or wanted to be. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I never knew that. My, okay, my kid's been singing since the age of three years old. Mm. And honest to God, I read once that from a client's um, um, signature, follow your passions for passions is, is all we have, mm. you know? And that's what I did. I basically reared my kid, you know, I was present throughout his journey, and this is what I'm trying to teach other parents, you know. It's, it's important just to be there and to listen, you know. If I didn't listen, I would have sent him to accounting school. If I wasn't present, he would have, I would have sent him to some place that he didn't want to be. But because I was present, he dictated his life. He basically, he, he orchestrated that he's going to SP because mm. there's an Apple Music Room. When he's at SP, he wants to be in the, the senior choir, you know? Yeah. Little things like that. Mm. I mean, that's conversations that can be missed easily, mm. but if you're not present. Mm. But when you're present, you need to act on, on things like that. 
because if you don't act on your kid's passion, he might find the passion elsewhere where you actually don't need him to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that's also the other thing is like, especially like with us dealing in the arts, um, as individuals who have made a living out of the arts, a lot of times parents in on the Cape Place will say, Nifa, what was it? I could do it. I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a lot of a lot of yeah. dreams are killed in Good that yeah. way. It's like you're killing the creativity. It's like you basically there's that thing uh, like when you're cutting off the wings of the butterfly, mm. and it's like nah, man. It's like my partner has said that that was a mental lost in music. Af, they had no nerves. Bring it. Did my first time dance on a flight. Get fired. Stage to. Sorry, Dad, you were wrong. I show you. I think we can all relate to that on some level. I love you, but you were wrong. Uh, yeah. Like the conversation we're talking about now, I was just saying we can all relate to that in somehow. And uh, the way I would oh, see, yeah. the way I would segue into this is like um, my dad, like he he um, he tried to instill very much sport into me. Like, and maybe I was not the most sporty guy growing up, but because he instilled that sport into me, he pushed mm. me into that direction. It generally kept me always like and, and, and sport like um, gives you certain skills teaches you certain skills and those skills are brought over into other parts of my life so i, th- I thought to myself that is a it's a positive because i didn't want to do that but it mm. helped that i know you also incorporate sports into your your program like can you can you tell us a little bit more about that and i know you're gonna at your facility you're also gonna incorporate sports can you tell us a little bit more about how sports can uh, how my dad puts me into sports <laughs> and how it can push 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 um forward so so the 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 basic the basic thing of sports is team morale right yeah mm. so i played team sports there we go it's always about teamwork and there's a lot of discipline in teamwork so through sports we're hoping to install that discipline that that could be taken you know in other contexts as well because if you respect your next player uh like you should in order to win your your match yeah respect him off the field once you've got that 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 sense of of respect it, it, it will it won't take anything to to actually take it outside into your in well take it in, into your life yeah. you know um because i think the the one thing that that um the kids of today really um um lacks is is respect for one another and it's clear to see everywhere mm. um ik meen ik het ik het in die pad geloop aan dat ek ook gegroei het as iemand gesê het 'n vloek voor het ja my bro anti dinge is kos om uit my slippe but daar kry jy nou meer daai nie van anti dinge is bang van sy weet wie is agter die klom nie you know yeah and and um it takes a village to raise a child there we go yeah it it used to take a village you know, and nowadays it's only them, and we can actually see it. Come on, the mother and fathers at work, who's looking after the kids. Mm. The auntie is in your down, the village isn't there to support you anymore. So it's, it's sad because now we have to look into opening things like safe havens like this because yeah. while you at work, you have peace of mind that your kid is actually at rise up and mm. doing something educational, you know? is learning or she is learning from someone that actually has um that has that cares for them that has uh, high hopes for them you know and and that wants to see them actually excel in life because ek weet nie wanneer was die laaste wat ek gehoor het van iemand uit park could besides Jessica that's made um SA colors now for uh, for women's football mm. i mean there's too little of that mm. i mean it, it fell through the cracks as well that one of our um, church members' kids actually went for national netball um, mm. playoffs. And I mean, a similar thing. Yeah. It, it, not, it, not being, it, it uh, not being celebrated. Back in the day, it was celebrated mm. in the mm. newspapers and people would get behind to support them financially, even. Exactly. So, mm. so, so, like, like you, you said, yeah. this is also how I can integrate my skills by actually putting them out there. I mean, if you go onto our Facebook social page, mm. you'll see that. I always record the games at Oasis because mm. in 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 hopes that someone out there will actually see the skids and the mm. skills so that they can actually get on board and help us develop these kids, you know. Yes, they're good in football, but we also need to get them academic academically stable. Yeah. Because we need to work out some type of, of curriculum that is actually going to enhance them. Mm. So as I as I can mix with say with say passion, yeah. 
Hij moet weer komen zijn passion te gaan doen, you know? Mm. And that's the type of thing. Also, schools today. Kids matriculate and then they don't know where to go. Mm. Whereas, <coughs> if, if I take the, the four of us sitting here, five, um, between us, we know that as a country, uh, ambition, uh, yeti, um, apply to the army. Mm. Why not do that? Yeah. Apply at the Navy. Mm. my the defense forces. Yeah. And it can also mean, so, as you know, what happened to these things? I mean, the assembly holds it for all the applications and it's no more. You know, so this is why we have our PR, which is mm. Michaela Adams and my sister as well. They, they always out there seeking for job opportunities mm. and then we just, you know, we, Make we it distribute, available, yeah. you know, because it's, it's not available in our areas anymore. What's the hours of operation for, for the programs? So when, when Rise Up uh, kicks off and the offices is ready, mm. we're looking at a probably 7 to 5.30 or mm. 7 to 6 so yeah. that it gives parents enough time to collect the kids and so forth. Mm. Um, what, we will, what we're hoping to, to put on the table is a safe space for them after school to do mm. their homework. Once they're done with that, the feeding scheme will then yeah. come in and feed these kids because you can't think if, you, if you're if you on an empty stomach. Mm. Um, and thereafter, there's netball, there's football, there's the vegetable garden, there's the dance class, there's singing classes, there's a band, you know? Mm. This is what we want to do. Um, so I'm going to cool. go um, out on a limb here and just saying Hildewood will be hosting classes here as well. Awesome. So we'll be hosting four disciplines, which will be the DJing, the beat making, rap production, um, dance, hip hop dance, because we're also looking at establish getting the kids ready for the Olympics with b boying. Um, and then the when is the l- is when is the b boys mm. gonna be in the Olympics? Twenty twenty four, the Paris Olympics, and then are we putting guys through? We are actually currently busy doing establishing a federation um, for the South African Break Dancing Association, um, getting the kids ready, but um, that's still waiting confirmation sure. now from the main body, which is the WDSF. World Dance Sport Federation appointed um, body in South Africa, which is Dance Sport South Africa. So the application has been made for us to be this federation to become the way forward. So we have branches or like affiliates with across the provinces within South Africa. So that has just been a process. It's literally been a year of back and forth and meetings and establishing things. Up. So yeah, that's that's the road forward. Um, it's a pity the Olympics is no money, but I mean that's still. Uh, it's, I it's guess it's, it's eyes it's on the sport, it's it's eyes on money the financially. B boying has B boying has been around since the seventies, and um, <laughs> there are many. This, the Olympics is just another platform uh, to showcase this yeah. and another stream of possible income, sponsorships, and endorsements, oh, etc. Yeah. But it's just another platform. There are still going to be your your underground jams, your ciphers, etc. Your normal battle of the years, the R16s, freestyle sessions, like competitions that are running across the world um, for this. But it's like this is a way more to formalize it as a sport mm. because primarily as part of hip-hop culture, it's one of the elements of hip-hop culture. But like I said, that being said, Yieldwood will make contact with you. That will be me um, just to establish exactly what day and what time we can come in. But our services are available. No, Sounds tough. very good. That's the whole of the Nicker. With that being said, guys, uh, Wait, with final thoughts. Uh, final thoughts. Can I, can I, can I just, okay. So, okay. What I, what I, like, what I can word it now, no, uh, mm. for me, like, what you said was important, man, because you cannot, I heard this on, online one day, I heard this, like, you cannot judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. Oh. That fish is going to fail miserable, miserable, miserably. So, with that being said, man, like, mm. like you said, also like this as artists, like, we are, we, we are, we, we have so much creative light is not on, mm. on the Cape Flats, man, but that avenues never get explored because of the parents. And, and it's true what you said and you said, because even my mother may say, I can't even the music lose. Even last night she told me, like, I mean, man, and, 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 and I was supposed to, my, my father wanted me to study sound engineering. And at the end of the day, I became like, a sound engineer as well because mm. I love music. Mm. On the best podcast in Cape Town. On the best podcast in Cape Town. On the best podcast in Cape Town. Not forgetting. <laughs> yeah. And 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 for me, uh, uh, um, following my passion is the most important thing because it brings me sanity, man. Mm. Like I would, uh, I, I I had a couple of jobs 
No, we we I we I um I, I couldn't stay more than a year or a couple of months and I had to leave because I wasn't happy. Mm. I didn't feel satisfied, man. Mm. And 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 for you as a parent not to not to uh, allow your lady to go through to go and, and, and pursue his passion will be it's, it's you don't you don't know what that's gonna do to that lady psychologically also, man. You understand? And 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 our our people on the Cape Let's look at Auntie Jenny. Mousy mm. mentions yeah. Mousy mentions that lady uh, uh, um, a lot uh, in his music. Also, she also uh, 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 started a garden in Lavendale, and then she loves of that garden. Mm. From that garden, she she didn't she doesn't work. She don't have okay. She can probably all pay in mm. that sasa, you know, and but she loves completely off her garden. She, she don't eat meat, so it is cool, so it is fully and if she's sick, and if I'm sick, I'll, I, I go to her and ask her, uh, Auntie Jenny, um, I'm not feeling well, this is wrong, this is wrong, then she'll take me to the garden, she'll yeah. get something for me, and then yeah. I, uh, ne the next day I'll feel mm. fine, mm. I'm, I'm good, now we need more people like that in our mm. community, and that's just my final say. You know what? That that's that's actually very mm. important. Um, I actually made a point of it when we started this initiative. Mm. That you know what? Yes, we 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 wanting to save our youth, mm. but equally with with the youth, there's there's elderly people that is not being um that is not being looked after. You know, yeah. there, there's nothing for them. So I'm hoping that because of of the importance of yeah. of, of the elderly and the wisdom. That they can also park in with 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 rise up and then just bring us there because also also some earlier no yeah include that it cannot out in there and then find the group means of and 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 I mean we lost our our and it's sorry that I'm only mm. mentioning this now we lost one of the most important figures in Parkwood and also of our our um our organization uh, due to COVID nineteen I mean m brother Kevin Solomon he he basically facilitated all of the sports in Parkwood. He was the president of Rise Up because he was always um, sorting out all of the, the tournaments, getting the, the fields ready, you know, mm. taking the team and then just doing all of the logistics. I mean, he was a father, he, not only his family, but to most of the kids out there. Yeah. Um, and, and it's quite sad because all of our, our, our heritage and our... our um, our source of of of, of knowledge is, is mm. dying out, you know. Yeah. And and me being the person that I am, I shall alter the nature of my social club. I said, when I go to Italy, I will not make, you know. In and in a swamp to see that those fellow are more demands. So, but it, what I also want to say is that um, guys out there that's listening to this, you know what? We need to respect these people. Um, this is the people that actually got us to where we are today. Unless you mean what we could not for 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 you directly, but for iemand but they with friends in the I mean that that they can but I clone can you know. So it's it's a it's a chain reaction. We need to start looking after the elderly, yeah. the young, and getting the guidance from the elderly just to 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 hand over to the young because I think that today our, our biggest challenge is the the age gap. Mm. So if you 20 years or 30 years older than a uh, 16 year old, you will think, ah, take it you know? Mm. But now come, I can it's a 10 year, uh, and I get in. Um, that I can, I still in all the kringes. All the lies for me. Yeah. Ma, all the, all the, all the way, be that it come in, I can, I owe my nothing. And that's bridge, just what we need to, we the conduits, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and we need to, we need to start focusing on that. Honestly, like in your words, say, say, what the son can make in the dark side, the old man's are at, you know? We need that. We need yeah. that in our lives and worlds. And also, like, what, uh, what I take away from it also is the legacy is, like, the, the fact that Mr. Solomons was able to inspire. Um, and in his passing and in his wake, he has now left people behind that are willing to take on the torch. That legacy is there. There, need, there needs to be legacy, needs to be continuous in terms of we're giving you the knowledge, pay it forward, Correct. take up the torch when I'm no longer there, etc. Mm -hmm. With that being said, um, we video. got um, another um, member from Parkwood, um, we're going to play a clip from uh, Monisha Jade Spitfire, mnemonic <laughs> Mercury Metronome, oh. all the monikers she's known Make by. Make sure the volume is on up here. It is the story of three artists who feel both trapped and advantaged by life in the Cape Flats. 
trapped by what feels like a vibratory prison, which makes people forget their power and lineage of greatness. Look at a community, man. You know, we're all the same people. Why are we all living in a different class structure? The late Mr. Devious. I play the character of Mercury, and Mercury is, um, she's a poet, uh, she loves writing, um, she's also a rapper, an MC, and uh, she spends a lot of time in her head, she spends a lot of time um, in a, a world that she's created for herself through her writing and through her lyricism um, and through her love for music as well and hip hop. I uh, play the role of Chantal, aka Sentel. <laughs> um, and basically, she's a dancer and she loves dancing. She basically goes through this journey of. I would say discovering herself, she already kind of knows who she is, but kind of go through um, different challenges to basically do the thing that she loves, which is dancing. She faces some struggle at home, I don't want to give away too much with her, uh, um, at home with her family, I would say, and then also with her friends and in the community. Um, but she tries to push through the struggle to, 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 to do what she ultimately loves, and that is dancing. Yeah, because you're going to play the master board in Korea. She sees herself as somewhat of an activist. Um, she sees the struggle of her people from her unique perspective and she, she, she faces a lot of challenges. She comes from a single parent home where it's just her and her mother and her brother and she has to deal with a lot of responsibilities. <laughs> Um, dancing, I think, is also just a metaphor um, for life because, I mean, there's different things that different people like in life and sometimes we, in our culture, we don't get to do what we love to do. We get told what we have to do. And, and she's faced with that struggle and she kind of uh, pushes boundaries and goes through the most. Mercury, how come you still have a baby? In what fun it costs? Vami as Jayilda. Inhale determination, we will overcome. Come, exhale reverberation, metronome, my drum, drum. Memory is a weapon, you must remember where you come from, where you come from. Inhale determination, we will overcome. Come, exhale reverberation, metronome, my drum, drum. Memory is a weapon, you must remember where you come from, where you come from. Inhale determination, we will overcome, come, exhale reverberation, metronome, my drum, drum, memory is a weapon, you must remember where you come from, where you come from. Inhale determination, inhale determination, we will overcome, come, inhale determination, we will overcome, come. Oh yeah, so yeah, um, go check out uh, the nope. Facebook nope. page, nope. Uh, Mercury Metronome, and support the Sustainer Journey to try and get this um, production back at the Artscape, um, also featuring um, a very well-known Cape Town actress uh, and dancer, uh, choreographer, Mel Rock. Did you say that she was there? Melissa de Vries, yeah. She's on Cakenet, yeah. That's dope, dude. Her show That's Walking big. with Mel is on, is on Cakenet, so yeah. She is also big. set the precedent um, and also like get, yeah, has the guns blazing in acting in various um, soap operas, etc. I think Arden's play is one of them. Sait Oosta, I think she's she featured on here as well. So um, she's also very, very active in the dance scene, um, has won a couple of national titles as well. It was, um, I think she did um, training under Popping Pete um, in the States as well. So she's quite a force to be reckoned with, a very multifaceted person. Mm -hmm. um, so that's Mal Rock, um, Melissa de Vries, uh, Mercury Metronome, um, AKA Manisha Schumann, um, yeah, she's um, also featured on the Never Again EP, um, the book that was written by uh, A. Samuel Lim, 
Adam Opt, um, Quentin Williams, as well as Emil Jensen. Tell me that that the Walking with Mal show. Yeah, is that like so like an interview show? Yeah. Oh, she like yeah. interviews like okay. creatives and I've seen it. I've seen it. I've mm. seen it. No, for sure. Okay. Oh, we so yeah from us to babbling it. So I hope you enjoyed it this week. Yeah, this is the fourth episode. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Drop that no pimenirki.